suspicious. You act too suspicious. Keep all of that rah rah that baby blah blah. I got a feeling about this one. This one right here. I'm out late, you be texting me where you at. You know I'm your rubber band, I'm bound to come back. And if you know that, you need to show that. Keep your reflections, not trying to do that. You don't got a clue. Keep all the excuses. Stop acting like I'm who this. You project and get up out my way, I'm ludicrous. I don't got nothing to lose, ain't worried. You acting suspicious. Keep all of that rah rah, that baby blah blah. I got a feeling about this one. This love language caused me to worry, 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 worry about it. Worry, 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 worry about it. I'm too loyal. Why you acting scary about it? Worry, 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 worry about it. Switching lanes. Don't you switch up on me? Had a dream, I lost it. Try it. There you go, the FLS Friday live stream MTV debut uh, for Moxie Raya right there. Very cool video, uh, and that was for Love Language. Before that was Stones, requested by Stone Spanish Six Stones World and Carip Love. And before that, if you go back a couple of videos, you had Clara requested by Clara S. Mia, and I Beat Tamo, and B-Bag Scott Trill. You guys have amazing names. And that was the FLS music video debut of Heaven. And now we have Moxie. Straight out of the video, live on your screens right now. Joining us from a uh, really cool studio in Los Angeles. Yeah, this is a recording studio. I recorded a bunch of my project in here, so it's like a little second home. Well, it's like, I mean, vibe is like everything when you when you make music, and that looks like that is quite the vibe right there. Yeah, you can just be in here for days at a time, not know where you are or what's going on, <laughs> just focused on the music, so. How, what's like the longest you think you've ever been in a studio at one time? Um, I mean, I, I, I go outside, but like, I probably, I mean, there was a while I was, I think I was sleeping in a studio for about a month. You were living there. Yeah. This was like many years ago when I first moved to was LA. Was this in LA yeah. or New York? Oh, this was in LA. LA. This was in LA. Yeah. Oh, it's incredible. Yeah. Um, all right, yeah, I was in one room you. and Travis Scott was in another and I, I don't think I left for a month. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's crazy. Yeah, it was cool. <laughs> um, we'll talk about all that. I do want to lead with Love Language since we just saw the video. Um, just released it. What inspired the song for starters? Um, the song is really about, you know, me or somebody, a girl or guy being very self-assured and confident and loyal in their relationship, but their partner always doubting them and always thinking that they're doing something when I'm saying in the song, like, I'm just working, I'm just focused, but I'm loyal to you, but you're just always, always thinking I'm doing something wrong. And so it, it's saying like, if, if their love language is that sort of possession, it's gonna make me worry because what are right. they doing? Is that something just as an artist and of course with a following and success that you go through, you know, in the dating world? I have, and, and I have to admit, like, I've also been insecure in relationships before, but this project is all about um, things that would empower me 
So in the, in the yeah. song, I'm very confident, very self-assured, but I have been in relationships, especially when I'm on tour and people don't understand that. And they're just like, where are you? What are you doing da, 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 all the time? And I'm just like, oh my gosh, I am just working so focused, like not even thinking about anything other than work. So when you write a song like this, were you, did you write it from a confident uh, place or was it almost do you sometimes as an artist write a song um, in an aspirational way where you're not feeling confident. Maybe if you write about confidence, you know, you can manifest it. That's kind of what this whole project was about. Um, and we can get into that more, but really it was about only putting powerful lyrics in my music so that not only I could repeat them, but any, any girl that listens could repeat them. And I saw this as a common theme when I was on tour opening for Justin Bieber. A lot of the girls would write me and we would have conversations in DMs and it'd be like, I'm feeling insecure about this and this guy doesn't like me or this da, 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 and I don't want to go to school because of it. And I was just like, what can I do in my music that like, we all need to be brainwashed into confidence. So let me put these words in the music and just hopefully that that just plays over and over again. And then we start to all embody it. Totally. Speaking of uh, Bieber, that was the purpose tour, right? Yes. What was that experience like? That had to be life changing. It was, it was very life changing. Um, it was, like tour 101 i was kind of just thrown into it like five days before the seven month tour started and it was arenas and i've never done that before and so it was just like learning as i go and the best part was meeting so many people fans supporters and like getting that contact with them it was just amazing it was what it was you post and, and bieber right wasn't that yes. the lineup Yes. Yeah, what a tour, looking back. Did you ever, like, cross paths with Post backstage? Because that's another, like, misnomer about tour. People oh, think yeah. you guys are all hanging out, but it's, like, so busy. But did you get to hang out with them at all? No, we did. We did. One time I was on my tour bus, and my dad walks in, and he was, like, he's Italian, really old-fashioned. He's, like, there's this really sweet boy outside your tour bus. I don't know who he is. He has a shirt for you or something. I look out my window, and I'm, like, Dad, that's Post Malone. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, he's so sweet. He's just out there. He said he has a shirt for you. His dad made these shirt, these jerseys for me and Justin. So. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's that Southern charm, man. That Texas charm. Yeah. Um, so sweet. Now you collaborated with the, the Grammy award winning artist and producer Beam. And then also uh, Simon Plummer, uh, who's known for sort of writing with artists like Sweetie. How was it working with them on the record? It was really amazing. I, I met them all in Miami and ended up staying in Miami for three months and did this whole EP with all of them oh, wow. down there. It's like they have a group of like 10 friends and they all, 15 maybe, they all grew up together and they all create music together. And they welcomed me into their little group and I made the whole EP there in Miami. Where's their studio in Miami? Is it South Beach? Or it was, it was all different. We actually ended up renting an Airbnb and okay, just cool. walking in there for weeks and writing every day. Yeah, there's something about that city. Like artists really love it, and like a lot of like it brings something out of artists. You know, I know people in all sorts of genres that just like they they get them they try out different cities and they get the most done in Miami for whatever reason. Uh, from my experience and and from working with these people, it's very like laid back, which allows like creativity and inspiration to just come mm -hmm. out of you more versus like being stressed or in LA when it's like you only have a certain amount of time in the studio and Miami you're just kind of like letting it happen and flowing and. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great way to put it. Um, mm -hmm. The song's been streamed on Spotify. Congratulations over 100,000 times already. Um, you've sort of already talked about this, but what's like, if you could pinpoint it, of course, confidence, what is like the one thing you want your fans or anybody listening to the song to take away from it? Um, really to feel, I can't curse on here, but really just to feel like a bad. No, we can't, right? <laughs> I should know that as the host. But really just to feel like extremely confident in yourself, in your bag, in your zone, totally just in your zone. A bad B. A bad B is what I was trying to say. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> um, the video too, which we just played, made its MTV debut right there. Um, 300,000 views already, so congratulations on that. The concept though, I gotta ask you, you open the shot there, is that like some CGI or some special effects or were you really upside down? I was really upside down. We could only film for, they originally said 15 seconds at a time, um, but we ended up doing like 45 to a minute because um, I thought it was going to be a lot harder than it was to be upside down for that long, but I ended up kind of loving it. <laughs> and now I, 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 talent. 
the stunt coordinator was the nicest guy ever. And I, his name was Say. And I just, I'm like, can I do stunts on every video? Like, this is so fun for me. Oh, yeah. I love and then it. I'm sure you, you took to the dancing. You started in dance, I believe, early on in your career. Is that something that you, you always, you know, kind of make a priority in visuals? Yeah, it hasn't always been a priority in my visuals, but for this music, it's all so up tempo and there's a lot of energy. And so definitely all this whole, all the music I'm going to put out is very dance centered. Totally. All right. So now the love language, right? Of course, the title of the record. What is your love language? How do love languages work? So you have to take a quiz. And actually, I have one on my Instagram if you want to go and check it out. Is this really? Is this a real quiz or like a, like a BuzzFeed quiz? This is like a legitimate like... Is I'm there just saying it will find your love language, okay? It's better than nothing. <laughs> is, it, is it one of these like uncomfortable it's very truths? very accurate. Wait, so what's your love language? Like, give me an idea of what a love language is. So there are five. They say there's a six, yeah. but there are five and it's... Words of affirmation, physical touch, gift giving, quality time, and what's the other one? What is what's it? the rumored six? What's like Where the controversial that? sixth one? That it's like it's like and... space or something. Space. Yeah, I feel like every guy. When you're lower, just like don't come near me. <laughs> acts, oh, of service, acts of service. Acts of service. Mm -hmm. is that, okay, so acts of service would be, how is that different than gift giving? Gift giving is more like, here's a physical object. And then acts okay. of service is like, let me help you move. Or let me help you clean your apartment. Or I gotcha. Which could also be quality time. There's a lot of crossover here. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like the gift giving one would just like you would go broke really fast if, you, if your partner was was that was their love language. Right. But is you that your love language? No. Mine okay. is can I guess of yours? Oh, and, and I physical touch. It. You you usually have like oh, you a can have two? and then a sub. Yeah, you usually have like a main one and like a you can be like category. so so who told you this though? This quiz told you this? I took a quiz, Kevin. You have okay. to take a How quiz. long does the quiz take? Five minutes. Does it really? I should do yes. it during the next videos. And this is on okay. Mokti Reyes Instagram. Well, it's on this Instagram that I have for the EP called You're Invited to the Future. Oh, okay. Hold on. You're underscore You're invited are. underscore to underscore the underscore oh, yeah, so future. You're invited <laughs> to... The Was You're Invited to the Future taken? You're invited to the future. Okay, cool. Oh, this is, this is really cool. This is an Instagram that I run and it's all about this the things awesome. that I'm into. Thanks. But so the first thing, the first slide, the most recent is the love language quiz. Okay. I gotta, hold on. They're telling, we just, okay. We might have to do this during this video. Um, okay. <laughs> Words of, uh, how is this a suspicious login, bro? Do you ever go through this Moxie where you're literally on your computer and it's like, this is a suspicious login and they won't let you into Instagram. Oh yeah. It has happened to me before. Um, it's very relatable. Okay. okay. You're invited to the future. This is really cool. Okay. I'm going to take it. Oh yeah. That's it. Moxie. What do you think mine is in the five minutes of knowing I think, me? I think, I think yours is quality time and probably acts of service as the third category. Quality time. Stop laughing. Producer Katie's laughing for you watching until you get home. And it's like in my ear, I can't even hear Moxie. Wait. <laughs> Wait, what? Wait, wait, hold on. Wait. She thinks I'm wrong. Wait, Moxie thinks it's quality time and what? And acts of service. Oh, man, I don't know. But the producers... Wait, wait, hold on. No, hold on. I'll go. Okay. okay, so Moxie thinks it's those. Someone behind the scenes, can they just write that down? And then producer <laughs> Katie, what do you think they are? Okay, I don't like getting stuff though. Those are mine, so. Those are yours, Moxie? Yeah, those are mine. Wait, so okay, in terms of compatibility, right? Like if two people have the same, right. are they compatible or are they incompatible? That usually works. However, I think for like long-term relationships, there always has to be a little bit of like a, 
tug in some way, like a push and pull. Yeah. So it's like, I, I feel like longer lasting relationships are usually have a slightly different love languages. So there's something to, you know, work towards. Sounds or, else or else it's just like, ah, we have everything we want over it. <laughs> um, and what's up with, I want to talk about uh, the crystals. You, you indig- like most artists just do merch, but you actually sell crystals? Yeah, I do. I do. I'm really How did you get into crystals? Metaphysical things. I think that that um, this whole project and and this superhero girl carbon and this whole kind of world that I artistic world that I created for this project, it's it's about really appreciating Earth. I think that oftentimes like we live on Earth, but we think of like oh there is a paradise and there is like Garden of Eden and it's not here and it's like we don't appreciate that what is on Earth. There's some like crazy amazing things like fruit comes off trees and it tastes amazing and then crystals form and rocks and they're like gorgeous colors and flowers bloom and they're so intricate and just beautiful and it just like I just started to appreciate like how incredible earth is and we take it for granted. Oh totally. Yeah. Um so and I, then I carbon like it feels surreal so. Well like but aren't I don't know if this is like I, my my knowledge of crystals is like uh, Spencer Pratt. Like that's from the hills. Like that's the only crystal knowledge I have. And weren't they somewhat what? healing? <laughs> Aren't Wait, they do what? you not know what I'm talking about? No, you know what I'm what talking about. Dudes, he like he made it mainstream. I feel like I remember oh, growing really? up like that guy was like always like buying crystals and like surrounding himself with crystals. Like so many crystals. Oh my god, I had no idea. But so aren't they healing or something? Like, how does that yeah, work? Each one has different healing properties. And um, I have a bunch of different in my house, in my studio, my bathroom. And they do different things? Yeah, they're meant to do different things. So what 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 one would you put in the studio versus like um, somewhere else in the house? Um, I usually like to put citrine in the studio or my workspace because citrine brings abundance and money. Nice. And then in my bathroom, I have like a rose quartz because that's for unconditional love. Okay. Like, you know, just good vibes. You're getting ready. And then, uh, by my bed, I have a moonstone, and that's very cleansing for when I go to sleep. And a green wow. um, fluorite, which is also very cleansing and calming. Do you ever do like incense or any of that? Um, sometimes. Sometimes I like oils more, like essential oils. I like oh, drop man. them in my candles and stuff. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, now you grew up in New York. Where in New Jersey did you grow up? Because you were talking to the producers before we went live. You grew up in New Jersey. Oh, Monmouth County. Yeah. Okay, right on. I grew up in oh. Bergen County. Um, oh, yeah. cool. But you you did the New York to LA move. I just moved out here in June. What? Mm-hmm. How, how do you like? Do you ever get back? Go back and forth? Do you ever make music in New York? I do. I do. I made. Um, I haven't made music in New York in a minute, but like two years ago, I was making music music in New York. Um, I I go back and forth a lot, not since COVID, but before that, I was in New York all the time, like at least once every two months or something like that. Um, and then I wanted to ask you really quick about this Timbaland tweet, which is like so crazy. Instagram, yeah. Oh, Instagram. But he posted, he tagged you on a beat that Timbaland made. And again, like... If there's a younger fan watching this, Timberland was one of the greatest producers in any form of music of all time. How did that whole thing come about? I literally have no idea. I was just in my house and I started to get all these Instagram comments like, Timberland, oh my God, Timberland. And I'm like, what? Because I had been saying his name for like months because this whole project was really inspired by a lot of his production and Aaliyah. And I was just like, what's going on? What's going on? And I went to his Instagram and he had a post on his page with a B and he said like, I need to hear Moxie Raya on this. I have no idea like how it came about, how he heard me, how he knows who I am, like nothing. So. That's incredible. What a great yeah. fan to have. Yeah. <laughs> it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. So I DM'd have you guys him. gotten to work? Not yet, but it's in the okay. works. He's down in Miami, right? Yeah, he is. He is. Right Miami connection. There you go. Um, what's what's coming up in 2021? A lot. So we just put out Love Language, the first single from the EP. We have a bunch more coming and then the EP before the end of the year and performances, more videos, everything. Awesome. 
We'll keep yeah. us updated here at MTV. We appreciate taking the time. Yeah, thank you so much. And you, you, you got to take that love language quiz now. I know. We're going to find out. Well, if, if you're right, we'll send you like an MTV shirt or something. I don't know. Great. <laughs> There'll be some prize. I have a feeling I'm we, wrong, but. <laughs> we'll see. Producer, I, I don't want Producer K to be right, but I have a sneaking suspicion. Um, <laughs> awesome. Moxie, thanks so much. Thank you guys so much for having me. Talk to you soon. All right, see you. Uh, cool. And remember, if you're watching MTV right now, stream love language. Um, now, still ahead on this show, we got Olivia Holt coming up, Harry Styles, Mimi Webb, a special message from our good friend Jaden, who am I, I am spending entirely too much time with uh, professionally nowadays. Uh, let's get into YouTube community poll for this week. This is an opportunity MTV gives you every week on Fridays, youtube.com slash MTV. And we give you like three new videos that just dropped, and you tell us which one you want us to play. So 71% of the vote. <laughs> I don't know if they're going to tell me, but I wonder what the other two videos were. 71 is like crazy. It's Madison Beer with Reckless, the YouTube community poll winner for this week. 